Hi, I'm author Nancy Flinchball with Writing for Change. Today, I'd like to ask a question. Do books change lives? As you think back over the books that you've read in the course of your life, consider to what extent have books changed you? It's a curious question I ask as an author because one of my goals is to write for change. Recently, I was leading a program at our local library on writing for change, and I asked that question, is there a book that changed your life? And do you know that every person in the room could tell us about a book that had changed their life? So I think there's something in this. And that's why I started my Writing for Change podcast and blog. I hope that my books will equip and inspire others to make the world a better place, to work for more peace, justice, and for earth care, and to take time to each enjoy each moment and to dance. I remember writing my first book on peace. I wanted to challenge Christians to think more carefully about the message of Jesus and the early church. During my youth, my country was embroiled in the Vietnam War. Americans were conflicted between supporting the troops and speaking up against a war that seemed very wrong. Because young men were being drafted into this war, it became the subject of much scrutiny. During that time, the Bible influenced me greatly. I learned about Jesus, accepted him as my personal savior. I was baptized and I joined the church. And as I listened to the war narratives, felt the fear of the young men being drafted, I also learned about Jesus. Jesus very clearly taught the greatest commandment are to love God with all our hearts and souls and might and to love our neighbors as ourselves. I simply did not see a place for war in the teachings of Jesus. The Jewish scripture predicted a Messiah and many believed that he would be a military leader. But Jesus chose nonviolence, healing, and love for his ministry. He told his followers, You have heard it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evil doer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the left, turn the other to him as well. In that Sermon on the Mount, Jesus also taught, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be the children of God. That's Matthew 38, verse 9. Jesus also said, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. That's in Matthew 18, verses 43 to 48. The message of the Bible, to me as a young Christian, seemed very clear. The book influenced me also in that I answered a call to serve God and people in my life. I studied the Bible further in church and college and began to work for peace. I earned my teaching certification, hoping to teach peace. I became a mediator, wanting to make peace. I spoke up against war and promoted nonviolence. Some people say that the first book you write is autobiographical. So when I wrote my first book, I decided to write about peace. I hoped that it might change people to encourage them to work for peace as well. Well, the Bible taught me the path of nonviolence. Others read the Bible and believe it teaches a path to war. The myriad interpretations of the Bible are astounding. I live in the United States of America, a country that was founded on the principle of separation between church and state. But 
various interpretations of the Bible influence much of the politics in America today. It's central to the political debate on many topics. Currently, we are at war in the Middle East, or there's, I should say, there's a war in the Middle East. Some Christians believe that the Bible predicts that as a final war centered in Israel, and so defending Israel at all costs, even obliterating the neighbor, neighboring Palestinians is justified for some in the name of God. And some think they are interpreting the Bible literally in this belief. I beg to differ. That's why I wrote my first book, Revelation in the Cave. How by a work of fiction, I sought to address the interpretation in the book of Revelation that is often used to justify war. Did you know that more books have written been written about the book of Revelation than any other book? My first book is complicated. I was learning to write. I may have buried the theme of peace a little too deeply in the story to change lives. An evangelical Christian who read my book said that evangelicals wouldn't accept the story for several reasons. And one of them was that I made the Muslim, there was a very benevolent Muslim in the book that helped my characters and nicer than some of the Christians in the book. And he said that just wouldn't fly. But I wanted to ask him, wasn't that exactly the story that Jesus told about the Good Samaritan? People look down on the Samaritans. It was a different religion, a different culture. And yet the Good Samaritan was the one that helped the person that got beaten by the, left by the side of the road. A local Christian booklet, bookstore at the time when I wrote my first book proudly displayed the Left Behind, a fictitious Christian series about the rapture and the end times, which again are interpretations of the Bible, which I do not believe are valid. Um, um, and so they refused to shelve my book. And I kind of felt like John the Baptist, the voice crying in the wilderness, speaking for peace. You know, like Gandhi and Martin Luther King, there have been great leaders who've spoke for nonviolence. And even though those are famous men these days, not many people still follow their teachings on nonviolence. But I personally believe books can change lives. They've certainly changed mine. The Bible has changed my life. And I continue to write for change. I continue to read books that change my life and motivate me to make the world a better place and to do good. So I'm going to be exploring this topic in my blog, Writing for Change, in future blog, blogs and podcasts. And I want, invite you to join me. Leave a comment or email me at nancyflinchbaugh.com. And if you are a writer for change, I want to invite you to do a guest blog or I will interview you. And if so, thank you for listening. And I hope that you will join me in making the world a better place with more peace, justice, and care for our earth. Follow this podcast on Spotify, Amazon, and Apple. If you also write for change and would like to contribute, contact me at nancy.flinchball at gmail.com. You can also find me and my books on my website at nancyflinchball.com and follow me on Facebook at Nancy Flinchball Author. Have a great day.